Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everyone in between, I am Overhugs, and I'd like to welcome you back to Building Bread. Thanks for choosing to join us on the adventure today. Today we're going to be spending some time on our villager trading hall. It's about that time where we need to start getting the librarians, both because I want to get the best possible enchanted gear that we can for our character here, and we're going to need a metric ton of glass. This is going to be a big, big need in the next couple of episodes, so I'd like to get on it now while we can start trading. Off camera, we've been doing a lot of stuff, actually. We've been trading quite a bit with our villagers here and getting all these farmers up to master level. So uh, this is largely just through the crops that we've had in the crop farm. Um, so pumpkins and melons and all that other stuff. And trading it is really not that interesting. So I skipped it. But you know how to do it. We've gone over the basics of trading and how you get your villagers up to that level, as well as getting cheaper trades. And if this is your first time joining us, I'll put a card up in the episode now. So you can click through and check that out. Other things we've done is to try and make this a little nicer looking. So I've gone through and I've done some detailing and some textures, and we have imported Scar from the Hermitcraft to make his amazing pumpkin patch. So this is largely just taking what we already had and putting details on it, adding some 3D, adding some textures, making it so that there's a story for the area. So we've got some different texture in here. We've got some different levels where we're bumping up and coming down a little bit, as well as having fires. I'm thinking like any time that you have pumpkins, that's generally late in the season, so it would be cool. So I wanted to put some fires strewn about, as well as the opportunity to come up and buy yourself either some melons or some pumpkins. And uh, we can see people trying to sell their wares, the various different jack-o'-lanterns, carved pumpkins, and regular pumpkins here. This was done generally using armor stands and invisible item frames. So I'll definitely cover this later, but that's going to be another episode because it's pretty complex and there's a lot to do with it. So what we did here as well is we have this path through to a lovely park, and I custom built this tree because I wanted a larger one than we could grow. And so the people can walk up here and enjoy the fire and sit on the bench. Ah, lovely. I plan on detailing this out a little bit more and basically putting like a pond here and clearing up our Death Star trench of trees in order to like not pollute this area because that looks straight up terrible. So why don't we get ourselves a rest and turn this today and talk about what we're going to do next with the librarians. And we're back, nice and well-rested and ready to face the day. One other thing I wanted to show you was that we got this while we were exploring Bastions, and this is the snout pattern. You can only get these in Bastions or Bastion Remnants, and they have to come from a chest or some other item within it. So this is nice. I was hoping for the pig step disc, but I am not complaining. It's nice to be able to have it. Since we've got a nice pattern, we went ahead and enchanted our shield too. The only sh enchants that a shield can take is unbreaking at three and mending. And so because of that, we did it. Not a big deal otherwise. So let's go through what we're going to do here. So librarians are one of the unique villagers in that they have a significant amount of trades. It is possible to get just about every enchant in the game from a librarian. And because of that, we're going to have to build more than one row. This is going to be the only row in our trading hall where it will be two rows of the same type of villager. So why don't we take our super speed potion and get into a time lapse?
And there we go. Two more rows complete. So we don't quite have all the enchants yet because that's a lot of work, but let me go through and show you what I've been doing so far. So what I like to do with these enchanters is to know what, who has what. And you'll see the number of enchants and like the levels and what they are, and you'll also see letters down at the bottom. And the reason I do that is to know what I can trade with them. G is for glass, S is for bookshelves, and B is for books. So if I want to rapidly do any trades or if I need materials, I know exactly who to go to on top of the enchants themselves. And we've gone through and set the trades of just about everybody in this row. Uh, efficiency 4 here is on purpose because at this point in time, that was the biggest enchant I was lacking. So I'm not going to keep this one. Close your ears so you don't hear this. I'm not going to keep that librarian. But uh, everything is fine. Don't worry. Everything is fine. So let me show you how I've gone going through and doing this. So what I do in order to make sure that I get the enchants that I want is I will take a block and I will put a block on top of the lectern here uh, so that I can still click them. But this one doesn't have anything I want. So I will break the lectern and pick it up. And then you'll see that this villager goes back to having no profession. So I put the lectern back and they become a librarian again. And I can check. Nope, still nothing I want. And I'll go through and I'll do this until I get an enchant that I either don't already have or something is better. There we go. Thorns 3. Thorns 3 is not an enchant we have. And then I will buy one thing from them in order to lock the enchant. Once they have anything in the XP bar here, their amount of things in the trades will not change. This is now locked forever until this villager goes away for some reason, not saying anything to you, everything is fine. So once that's done, then we can just remove the block here, and this one's all set. And if I had any signs in my inventory, I would put up a sign that said Thorns 3. And that's just to remind me of what they have for the first enchant. As you can see, some of these will get multiple enchants. We have somebody over here that's, like, amazing. Uh, where was it? Yeah, right here. Projectile Protection 4, Punch 2, and Mending. Three all useful enchants on one librarian. So this one is great. You can get multiple valuable enchants per librarian that you have, which is great because then that means that we don't need to have like all 40 librarians that each have a unique enchant and have to run around and find each one. It's nice to have it. I had, uh, on one world, I had one that was, uh, that had... Mending, Unbreaking, and Silk Touch all on the same villager. Like, that was just straight up amazing. I protected that one. <laughs> all right, so now one of the things that I want to cover in this episode is how we're going to get our potions. Because you can, if you're very careful, and that's one of the reasons that I like this layout. If I had a Splash Potion of Weakness and I toss it right here, I can hit all four of these villagers at the same time, which reduces the number of potions that I need. But even if I did that, that's still five potions per flip per row. And that's not enough. Like, I did the one over here, like this villager. I ran them through, I think, four conversions back and forth in order to get everything down to one, which is exactly what I want to do. So that means we're going to need four potions per four villagers here. So it ends up still being one to one. So let's go and clear out the night and get some sleep and talk about what we're going to do next to have an auto potion brewer. So over here, we're going to build an automatic potion brewing station. And I'm going to take Impulse SV's design that he built for this because it's a really nice one. And I'm going to modify it to have additional bottle capabilities because I don't want to have to create and fill bottles and feed them into the system. So I'm going to create a little contraption that will automatically fill bottles whenever any are taken out of the system. So let's get going on that, and I'll be back in a second.
and here we go. So, like I said, this is an Impulse SV design, and it comes from the previous season of Hermitcraft. Uh, Tango Tech, another Hermitcrafter, just recently redid it, and so that is how it got brought to my attention. So I'm appreciative of that, and now I can share with you. One of the things to notice is there's a couple of gotchas on this. One, uh, make sure that all your repeaters and comparators are right before you start. Otherwise, you can rip through an enormous amount of bottles, which with this, if you build this exact thing, will end up costing you a huge amount of water bottles very, very quickly. And since water bottles can't stack, you could very rapidly find yourself with a double chest full of just water bottles that you're not really going to be able to use. Um, but otherwise, that's about it. This is pretty simple. Please note that the composters are not necessary. I just put them there to reduce lag. So if you're constrained on resources and you're trying to build this, you don't need those. That's just the way that I do it. So the way that this works is whenever it sees that this hopper is empty, meaning that this comparator isn't drawing a signal from it anymore and it flips, the observer that is here will notice that it will activate the sticky piston, push up this observer, activate a repeater that is there, which will then cause things to be dispensed out of these droppers down this hopper stream. Once something is in this, meaning that this, which is basically just an item filter, is powered enough to get down to this block, it will turn off this redstone torch and unlock this hopper. And this hopper will cause water bottles to come into here, and that will start the brewing process. And we can see that by taking out a couple of items here. So we have a couple of just regular potions of weakness that aren't splash. So let's take them out. And you'll see it activates. And now we have water bottles in here. And the Fervent Spider Eye is brewing. And it will become a potion of weakness. And then up here in this hopper is gunpowder waiting to turn it into a splash potion of weakness. Once this brewing process completes and you hear the glug glug glug. Thank you that will cause this to be emptied. So once this goes through and this clears out and this fermented spider eye, which would be the next step clears, you'll see that again, this changed because now this is full, which caused this to fire. And now this redstone torch is reactivated, which locks this hopper, meaning that no more water can come in to the brewing stand. And so that's how it makes it so that anytime you remove anything from here, if you remove these potions, it will be infinite, and it will continue to brew as long as you have ingredients. Let's go up and look at the water bottle system, which is mine. This is not part of the Impulse SV design. So what I did here is I'm checking a hopper over here to see if it is full for the exact same way. And if this is full, then this comparator, which is on subtract mode and comparing to a block of redstone, so it needs to be maximum signal strength in order to fire any signal whatsoever. So if this hopper is not full, then it will allow this redstone torch to reactivate because it's being deactivated by the full signal coming from the comparator, which will set up a simple clock here, which will go around and fire this dispenser, which is full of water bottles, into a waterlogged stair. So because this is a waterlogged stair, anytime that you fire an empty bottle into water, it will automatically fill. Underneath this is a simple hopper chain that pulls over to the system itself, and I've just put a bunch of extra water bottles in here. This system was designed for a much bigger setup than this. It's basically going to be, when we get to our full brewing station, then uh, this can power that entire thing. So this will do enough to have uh, 15 or 16, I forget how much I settled on uh, brewing stations for our potion brewing episode, but uh, that's another episode. And lastly today, let's show this whole cycle start to finish. So we have four different librarians here that I want to convert. So let's lower them all down using the switch here. And we need to get out of the way so that the zombie can't see us, because the problem is the zombie is tracking us, so he's ignoring the villagers. So we can come over here. Uh, and I forgot that we dropped this. Uh, <laughs> Let's fix that so that we can flip up the trapdoor so that the zombie can get over there. 
I ended up cutting it off so that he couldn't get to me because I had a repair I had to do. But this is also one of the reasons why we've given the zombie an axe, so that he can one or two shot the villagers and get it out of the way. So I need to grab a golden apple, so let's go over here and get some. Uh, and get some. Thank you. And now all that these villagers are converted, we can flip the lever and pull them all back up. And remember that I said, if you can get a slash post and a weakness right here, you'll get all four of them at the same time. So let's do that. And there we go. We got them all, including ourselves, but that's okay. And now let's cure all four of them. And this is the process that we're going to do. And we're going to go through and do it with all of them until they get down to one emerald per trade. And then that means that we never have to do it again. Everything is as cheap as it gets. And we'll do that with our farmers over here too, just to get them down so that everything is a one emerald trade so that we just don't need as many pumpkins or potatoes or carrots or whatever in order to go through and stock up on emeralds. And the reason that we want to do this as well is with all these bottles, I needed a ton of glass. So rather than having to mine a couple of shulker boxes worth, I was able to just come down here and go down the line twice and trade with everybody who had glass, and that gave me all the bottles I need for the potion maker over there. So it works out really well. These things become basically Victoria cycles of as you build a farm, it can support other farms and so on and so forth. And that to me is one of the things that makes this game really fun. And with that, we're going to call it an episode today. I wanted to thank you for choosing to join us on the adventure today. I have been Overhugs, and this has been Building Bread. As a reminder, I donate all the profits I make off of this to local food banks, so I would really appreciate it if you could like, subscribe, or tell a friend. Together, we can help people that are in need. I hope you have the most wonderful of days, and I'll see you soon. I, uh, I don't think social distancing is working here, guys. <laughs>